This is going to be a short one. It's a holiday weekend and it's also a homily. So we'll be in and out of here faster than you ever thought you could be. Uh, today's reading Proverbs 22 in its fullness is not only an indictment of those who abuse the poor and also an instruction on how to live in wisdom, but it also emphasizes the importance of treating the poor with kindness in the life of a person of wisdom. As it continues past today's reading from the lectionary in verse 16, it says, oppressing the poor in order to enrich oneself and giving to the rich will lead only to loss. Even further, the first saying of wisdom in verse 22 says this, do not rob the poor because they are poor or crush the afflicted at the gate for the Lord pleads their cause and despoils the life of those who despoil them. These are things that I think nobody should be arguing against. I love these words and all the words like them that are in our scripture. I've written them on protest signs, carrying it above my head while my legs prayed. But I still wrestle with these passages in scripture in my spirit because they speak about the poor and they don't speak to the poor. They are instructions on how those who are not poor should treat people who are poor. In fact, if you really spend any amount of time looking at each of these passages of scriptures that refers to the poor, it is always referring to a them, an other. Even the language is a little othering, and yet I would say that wisdom is not just not abusing the poor, people living in poverty, as it says in Proverbs, but that wisdom is acknowledging, taking it a step further, that people who live in poverty are wise no matter what their level of education, no matter what their circumstances, people living in poverty do not need an us to patronize them. And let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things, even the wealthiest and the most educated people in our communities are only one or two absolute crises away from living in poverty. In the age of Bezos and Buffett, the most privileged in our communities have more in common with people living in poverty than they do with the billionaires. There is no us and them when it comes to those of us who live above the poverty line and those of us who live below it. We need solidarity and we need to listen to each other. Do you know who my favorite theologian is? I kind of want someone to guess, just shout it out, just guess. Nobody? Okay, so it's Mr. J, the vet who sits outside of my favorite coffee shop most Sunday mornings. Um, you should, if you ever happen across him, um, ask him what his favorite piece of scripture is. Do it. Ask him what scripture is speaking to his heart that morning. Ask him how he sees God move in his life. And these are all things that I've talked about with Mr. J, a man who you might miss if you walk too quickly, if you're not paying attention. He's a man who quotes the epistles with more fluency and ease than most of the seminarians in my cohort, than myself. Last Sunday on my way to work, we drank our coffee and split a sandwich and just talked. And he shared with me the way that God is moving in his life, the way that God provides for him like she does for the sparrow. He is with the way that he synthesizes scripture, uh, theological concepts that he intuits from scripture in his own life. He's a powerful theologian without an MDiv, without a PhD, without a doctor, doctorate of ministry. Without any formal training, he is a radical theologian, and to borrow the term from Reverend Dr. Cody Sanders, he is a radical theologian for the livability of his own life. He is a radical theologian speaking truth to power, not only about his situation, but the situations of other unsheltered veterans in his community. And I don't want to speak about Mr. J. I want to speak to him. Um, I want to speak to him now, and I want to tell him you're a theologian. I learn so much from you every time we speak. I am constantly encouraged by our conversations. And I wish my faith could even come close in strength and conviction to yours. You speak so deeply of the joys of this life amidst the sorrow. You're also a prophet. You don't need anyone to tell you to speak up. You know what's wrong and you want to make a change. It's on us because honestly, we're better when we're in us um, to listen to the voices of us the, people living in the voices of people living in poverty who have been saying long before any privileged person was even aware that your situation is wrong. 
We can't kid ourselves any longer that the concern of the privilege came before your consciousness. We have only the obligation to join with you, Mr. J, to join with all people in the work of wisdom, which is not just advocating for the poor, advocating on your behalf, but sacrificing our luxuries for your needs and emphasizing your voice above our own in our collective voice. Thank you. Thank you.